Hi, and welcome to another episode at the Hot Rock Cafe, where we have heartfelt conversations based on the solid rock of faith over a cup of hot coffee. Today, we're going to be talking about the role of music in our faith. And joining us today for this conversation are two very special guests. We have Michelle Sarau, who has been a, a dancer for the past 19 years and has been choreographing for the past five. She, is, um, she has a brand called Rhythmic Rhymes, where she covers all kinds of dances, ranging from hip hop to ballroom, contemporary and folk. And uh, she actually recently directed and choreographed one of the RMC's youth series, called Lost and Found. Thank you so much for being here. And also here with us today is Father Sandesh Manuel, who is a YouTuber, blogger, author of a book, and most importantly, a Franciscan priest. He studied right here in Bangalore in St. Joseph's and then Christ University. So Father has been studying Carnatic music back here in India and then was invited to Austria where he's been residing for the past 10 years in Vienna, studying classical and contemporary Western music. Father is also an artist and proficient in various forms of music. Thank you so much for being here, Father. All right, so I'm going to just directly ask you the most interesting question, which is what kind of music do you listen to? So, Father, why don't you, I, we'll start with you. Um, if I can generally make a statement, I listen to everything, actually. All kinds of music? All kinds Nothing of Nothing is off the... I studied Carnatic music, Indian classical music. Right. So I listen to other genres of music in India, mm -hmm. Hindustani music. Right. Uh, I listen to also pop music. Right. I listen to metal. Oh, really? That's 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 first. <laughs> that's a first. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I listen to also some contemporary music also. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I listen to classical music because I study the classical guitar and a little bit of piano. Mm -hmm. um, I listen to a lot of rap. <laughs> okay. Uh, because I rap. Um, yeah, a little bit of complicated personality, but right. I'm open to all genres of music and I listen to everything. Everything. Yeah, Any yeah. favorite artists, Father? Um, That's a very, uh, it's a very yeah. question to ask anybody. <laughs> when you listen. Yes, but, but the first person who comes to my mind because I learned some first songs on the guitar hmm. was Eric Clapton. Oh, yes. Yeah, Tears yeah. in Heaven was yes. the first song I learned mm -hmm. on the guitar, especially the classical guitar, the finger style. To play this song um yeah he's been an inspiration um yeah brian adams oh yes yeah or uh vijay there's a canada singer i like his voice because i was in mysore mm -hmm. and i was learning from a teacher uh, that was a guru and then i saw in his showcase there was a z prize you know mm -hmm. a prize from the z tv i asked him who, who has won this prize and he said that's my son he sings for films, oh. um, so I'm a big fan of him. Yeah, that's that's nice. That's mm -hmm. a good list, Father. I listen to a lot of um, obviously worship music. Yes, yes. Gregorian chants. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you you pretty much covered everything. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's it, great. It, yeah. Okay. All right. It's and how it is. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's it's good. It's interesting. Yeah. And what about you, Michelle? What do you listen to? Who are your favorite artists? Um. I don't have favorite artists yeah. because as a dancer, I listen to all kinds of music. Right. But yes. in my personal opinion, I don't listen to metal father. I don't relate to it. And mm -hmm. as a dancer, I don't think I ever had an opportunity to dance to that kind of music. Mm -hmm. right. um, but yes, I love rap too. Mm -hmm. And I listen to all kinds of music. I love different languages. I explore cultures and their language. Right. Because different dance styles represent yeah. their music as mm -hmm. well. So yeah. yeah, I love that. So no favorite artist, nobody you want to name? Uh, <laughs> no. I think I love a lot of Bollywood music. As a dancer, I love a lot of Bollywood yeah. music and a lot of South Indian music. Because mm -hmm. we got the beats. Yes. We yes. can really put a show down in the yes. in weddings, especially. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. That's great. So, uh, Father, this is a very intriguing thing. A priest mm -hmm. who raps and a priest who loves all kinds of music. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about how you came to to be in this um, situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was a 17 year old teenage boy, just after my puberty, searching for meaning of life. 
I just finished college. Then I took, I thought I'll take a year's break and to go behind the questions of life. Like, what is the purpose of life? Or is there really a God? Mm. Um, then if, if there is a God, why there is suffering in the world? And all these questions as a young boy. Mm. Then I joined the Franciscans. They were my neighbors. I belonged to that parish, St. Anthony's Friary Church. Uh, it was a really interesting journey. I fell in love with St. Francis of Assisi. He was a troubadour, a musician, oh, okay. a street musician. Okay. And he led a very loose life. Then he had a, a conversion. Then he became a saint. Um, and I was on his journey, postulancy, novitiate, philosophy. I studied Indian philosophy, philosophy, theology, Indian music. But the journey was a little difficult. But what I can say is music actually helped my vocation. He supported my vocation. It helped me on my journey to become a priest and it gave me an identity. Okay, so I started to play guitar um, and uh, through this music, I said uh, I could be an instrument of peace. Instrument. Just oh, like nice, 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 nice one, Father. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was the journey. So I was open to all kinds of music. When I say as a priest, I listen to metal all the eyes are open. Right. Why? Yes. Um, see, I'm also a, a person who is studying music. I study in Vienna. I study yes. jazz and pop. I study a lot of music history. Mm. So I look at aspects not on just uh, when you say metal, it's all about drugs, rock and coal or girls or Lamborghini, rap, <laughs> big chains and all that. No, yeah. it's about the message that somebody is trying to convey through a language and the language is called music. Obviously, I don't support the things what they say, mm -hmm. no, yes. but the genre, what they are saying, it's in language. The rap was born in a ghetto where they had to say it very hard mm. um, to prove a point. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm open for different kinds of music. And I was in Vienna yeah, to right. study music. Yeah. Then uh, the European church is a little bit... Uh, having a crisis. Oh, you yeah. could say that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think crisis all over the world, actually. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Probably here we have more population in India, but yeah. uh, it is decreasing. Yeah. Mm. I see my cousins. I see my nephew. Yeah. It's a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I thought I tried to speak their languages. You go into the Spotify list and you see their playlist. There will be no with joyful lips or songs <laughs> right. from right. the church. No? Right, right. There will be all these songs like Bollywood, Hollywood. Yeah. You know? So I'm trying to speak the language mm. and putting a little bit of message yeah. and conveying. So mm. getting into their worlds is very important um, to adapt to their languages. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you also compose, Father. Mm -hmm. So how did you get uh, so is this the reason you compose or was there, did you start composing when you were still here in India? Yeah, uh, um, when I was here, it's been like uh, since music gave me an identity. Uh, so uh, every human being has a need to express himself mm. through dance, <laughs> also through your work as an architect, yeah. also through media, also through art, painting. Mm -hmm. um, so it's in a language, it's a form of expression. Yeah. Huh? Um, so music gave me this expression mm. and there were things I wanted to say. Yeah. Yeah. Words mm. can say beautiful things. Yeah. You can convey beautiful things through words. Yeah. But uh, with music, it is, it goes still more deeper. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because music is something which is uh, very emotional. Yeah. That's why at the beginning of the mass, we sing an entrance hymn while then because of that, it's your calm down or you come into a church, then you feel like welcomed yeah. or you feel a little bit enthusiastic and yeah. you feel, okay, now I'm in church, I'm being prepared. Then Lord have mercy, then responsory, communion. Mm. Mm. So these are moments what music plays very, very important role in our lives as human beings and also as Christians. Right. So, Michelle, what about you? Like, what, what would you say has been the impact of music in your life? You're a dancer, so music yeah. is all around you all the time, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. So, could you just tell me a little bit about your journey as a dancer and music and how you pick music for maybe your work or what you're listening to on the daily? Um, you know, before really, like, 
uh, I've always been a dancer, so I never really cared about the lyrics. You know, like like father said, you know, uh, music expresses emotion and stuff. But for dancers, it's all about the beats. It's all yeah. about you know the music that way. So we don't really care about the lyrics. Hmm. And for most of my life, I think I've been dancing to just those kind of songs until one day, one of my mentors came to me. One of my spiritual directors came to me, and she said, Michelle, as a dancer, you carry Christ with you, right? That's not a separate part of your faith. And she's like, by dancing to these songs. dancing to songs where you go back and see the lyrics and what they are promoting uh what are you doing with your dance right you're visually representing that though you may not be the you know uh you may not be supporting that music as a dancer you're visually representing that and that changed so that's when i started being way careful about how i'm selecting music because i'm not just a dancer i'm also teaching students dance right. so when i teach kids who are 3 and 4 who have no idea about music but they just grasp words mm. from the music they're listening to and they use it in everyday life i as a teacher need to be very careful about what kind of music i'm selecting so i i have a set of rules and i ensure that it's it's not contradicting my faith and of course no profane music at mm. all okay and uh, nothing that has any bad word Okay. There's one thing that I also do is um as a Catholic I try to challenge myself in a way that if the song is using the Lord's name in vain mm-hmm. and is not actually regarding God but just using the Lord's name in vain I try to like put that out of my playlist. Okay. And that was It's out of your playlist. It's not even like something no, okay. I don't even listen to that. Okay. Okay. So so I do two things. I I listen to music to study what it's trying to convey like father said like every song has a message. Right. So I even like even if it's a language I don't understand, mm. I try to go find out the lyrics mm. and really just try to understand what the message is about because yeah. some of the subtle messages we don't understand. Yeah. So that's me studying the music mm-hmm. and then there's something in my playlist which I will just not keep. And I only keep good music. Okay. And I'm trying to explore Christian dance music and a lot mm. of people are not aware of it. So I started I wasn't aware of it. This is really nice to know. Okay. You have a Christian playlist right. for dance and workouts. Oh wow. And okay. And it's on Spotify and you will you will you when you, even there's Christian rappers. Of course. Right. And I really I'm one of them. Yeah. Who is the one? Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh their music is so good because it's not just about what they're saying it's yeah. also the way they experiment themselves with music so we can actually dance hmm. you mm-hmm. know i always thought dance for as a christian is always just supposed to be you know slow and boring <laughs> right. but i'm just like no and after yeah. discovering this i realized that now it's time to change the dynamics of dance yeah i'd like okay. to add a point to yeah. michelle what michelle said yeah. uh, we have this indian culture and this dance is called bharatanatyam no? yes many people don't know the meaning of this word it is actually bha which is bhava emotions mm-hmm. ra which is raga music mm-hmm. natyam natyam is dance. dance so it is emotion it is music and dance and, dance. and there is also this um, in, in the indian tradition there is something called 64 art forms kala shastras yes. you 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 use this art forms to reach god for example the third one is something like you You archery. practice archery. Right. You need to be so concentrated yeah. that you need to cut out your everything that will disturb your concentration, right. so yes. that you can be totally concentration. And this concentration, you can reach God. Yes. The yes. second yes. art form is actually dance. Mm-hmm. You need to coordinate your body, yes. your ear movements, your emotions, and the first one is music. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. And the sixty-fourth actually is interesting. The last art form is actually politics. Oh wow! When somebody plays politics rightly, they can lead people to God. Wow, that's beautiful. But yeah. I had no idea anyone would consider politics. <laughs> I don't think the politicians also know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's that's very interesting, Father. Yes. Yeah, um, but it's a nice point what you made also, Michelle, about this. Um, you know choosing what kind of music suits your dance and this yes. conception that christian dance should be just boring. slow and boring yes. that's yes. the point actually church is is somehow boring for youngsters yes. have you sp- spoken to some youngsters yes yeah and they find it actually the mass boring yeah. you know yes, they don't understand the reading it's not their culture yes. the preaching is 
<laughs> yeah, all of those. Yeah. And if I might quickly plug, we've done a podcast on that. Please go check it out <laughs> on one of our previous episodes. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah. I wanted to add. So there was this one time we had a competition for all the youth. and uh, everybody was given the liberty to choose secular songs or gospel songs and this time it was me challenging the youth and i made an entire playlist of say uh, gospel songs to dance hip hop for so it was oh a, wow yeah okay. the choreography was hip hop okay and and uh, no one would ordinarily think you can do hip hop with christian yes. music right that's great and i okay. literally made an entire playlist and taught them a hip hop uh, choreography nice and they were so surprised and they were like oh my gosh i've never done this in my life and i'm just like yeah um i'm a little bit different in that part of uh, aspect of life although i'm a priest automatically people think okay spiritual music no i sing also secular song i sing also love songs mm. because also i am a human being <laughs> i have emotions <laughs> i don't want to seclude myself and sit in a corner and uh, you know make a retreat whole of my life mm-hmm. i just have one life we believe we are christians we have one life then we yeah whatever um so i need to also make the best of this life john 10 10 live your life to the best you know jesus yes. is given this life to the fullest so i try to experiment with different things mm-hmm. of course i have this discretion to say what is yes. extremes and mm-hmm. i choose also yes. the right things yes. but it's important i think for the christian world especially also the church to be realistic yeah somewhere i feel it is not realistic it's a bit critical but yeah. um where do you think they're critical father i i am critical i'm saying you're also critical i am critical not to condemn the church i'm in a way critical that the church opens its eyes mm-hmm. you know um chooses music what is uh, important for the youngsters right um and i'm in the european culture where i work there na so i have to adapt myself yeah so there i'm rapping so i get some hate comments from from this part of india saying that what what are you rapping why are you wearing a cap um, are you really a priest and all that but this is a beautiful uh, podcast actually i'm really happy <laughs> for redemptorist media center and especially vijay who's my good friend who invited me uh, an opportunity to make myself clear that i do this for a purpose yeah right okay <laughs> okay no that's great and i think also father what both of you all said speaks to responsibility as christians which yes. we with regard to music i don't know if that's spoken about enough because i think the question that arises from there is how do you know what music is good mm-hmm. and what is in line with maybe our catholic or christian faith mm-hmm. how do we then maybe filter out the music that we're listening to and how can we be also more open to the music that is coming out because as youth we are obviously going to listen to what is trending you can't escape it even if you don't want to if you open instagram the trending reels are going to have that music yeah. even if you are not in this in 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 the gen z age group even if you are yeah. an adult right well in your 50s 60s you're still listening to the same music because that's exactly. what's trending yes, yes, so yes, yes, then yes. if that is what everybody is consuming how do and some it's it's catchy <laughs> can't <laughs> escape exactly. it it's really catchy and often times especially with korean music like i don't understand the language right mm-hmm. and then you you feel yourself bopping to mm-hmm, it and mm-hmm. then somebody some years later will tell you oh wait so did you know what that meant yes mm-hmm. and yes, yes. i had no idea i just thought it was great so What would you say to that father? I'm looking at from a little bit of a bird's eye perspective mm-hmm. where my whole message of my YouTube that I do the music videos the whole title of this uh, YouTube project is humanity is the biggest religion. Don't be surprised I have also a tattoo here in Whoa. German which says Menschlichkeit is the gross the religion and Jesus says that he showed it by his life. Mm-hmm. Yeah that's my message. So when you look from the birds i view perspective um when you when you talk uh, our church music is not trending no? mm-hmm. then hill worship songs yeah. and you know contemporary christian music is yeah. a big uh, uh, happening thing in yes. in yeah. USA yes. and all yes. that. Yes, yes, so absolutely. they say you come and listen to our music yeah. that we are happening man you should come there. Yes. Right. Okay? Yes. see everybody is calling you come to our circle 
he will show you what is the best yeah, yeah. In also fact, th- yeah. even kanye west did that right yeah. he started yeah. his own he church because yeah. of the music church. he started it with the music yes. but yes. my point is a little bit uh, broader saying that every religion also says that Well, you come to us we will show you what is the best religion yeah. every mm. political party says yes. that okay yes. every human being says that yeah. you want to be my friend come into my circle yeah, yeah? Mm. we live in a bubble yeah. bubble of conviction but i am trying to use music to bring peace in this world yeah and i'm proud that i was born as a christian i'm proud that jesus uh, is my best friend and saint francis of assisi yeah is always there mm-hmm. um uh, with this message is what i've learned as a child from these people i feel we need to break these bubbles mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if you look at the humanity and the future right. of also the church and of the world yeah it's it's heading in a direction in a direction where you know hate is the first thing caused because you are not coming into my circle yeah mm-hmm. but somebody has to take this step and say hey we should be open yeah also with this music also yeah. with our convictions yeah. also with our thought processes that we come together yeah it's a little bit broad no but you know what i think that calls to cancel cultures are we as yeah. christians canceling each other out are mm-hmm. we are, are other people canceling us like i think that yeah. it's such a it's such a phenomenon Thing. right now that yes. if you're not with us then you're you against us exactly. yeah yes. yeah exactly so um my question was see you already said there are certain parameters for not yeah. listening to music yes. right yes, so yes. is there uh, can we perhaps uh, for the youth that are watching and have mm-hmm. questions as to maybe profane language is yes, one yes. but what would be good markers for how to identify what is good christian mu- or what is good music mm-hmm. in the christian light and mm-hmm. what is music that maybe we should avoid profane language might be a yes. a clear indicator but you know like else? when you mentioned like you know music is everywhere it's on instagram i cannot help it yeah. you can't help that yeah. but what you can help is what you're going to put on your spotify playlist and what you're going to be listening to in the car mm-hmm. you have a choice this is when these things uh you need to be mindful yeah. about what you're listening to right so if like if i'm going to be naming artists right mm. a lot of us are so crazy about uh rap music but then look at the rappers like if you talk about nikki minaj and doja cat and stuff like that the music is so bad like you wouldn't even want it in your playlist okay i have to cut you off there i do like them but then when i i do like them yeah. i do like them i listen so to them rappers Nikki. but i don't li- like the words they use yeah, yeah so the right? messaging is definitely so I, uh, i'm talking right. about them their content not their rapping their style is very good i love them as rappers but not their content i think i i i come under the same line as if the music is contradicting your lifestyle yeah. why are you listening to it? it 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 comes there right because sometimes what happens is you start listening to such content so 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 often mm-hmm. that you start believing in it so premarital sex or just money drug abuse it becomes like oh i think that's okay i think that's okay because the music is so it's right there it's on your face so that's why in if i'm talking about a lifestyle it's it's a question of why are you listening to it i know a lot of people would say because it's catchy and it's trendy mm-hmm. uh, but then again it's like um i personally don't have it in my playlist cuz i i don't want that kind of music to fill my mind right i like good music to fill my mind so even if a music is going to be talking about like proper emotions right we're talking about mental issues like if a to- if a topic is about depression talk about suicide these are real issues i will listen to it because there's a message that i would take and be like okay this is serious this is something that i would pay attention to about how human really feels but if you're like glorifying you know some drug abuse and talking about money it's all about the money and you talk about toxic femininity and stuff like that as much as there's a difference between glorifying it and there's a message of how it's a part of our broken world Mm-hmm. So if the message of the song is like it's a part of our broken world I will listen to it. I'd be right. like okay this actually is something that's talking to me. Mm-hmm. But if it's glorifying it and just we're all just randomly dancing to something I, it doesn't make sense to me to be honest. Where I come from is um see I'm I keep in mind as to 
um, understanding that a lot of us don't have that maturity to understand that everyone has a past and to figure out where they are broken and stuff. We're just going to watch and consume that content, right? So if I have to talk about uh, the Grammys that happened and, you know, Unholy being one of the most famous songs and Sam Smith. Sam Smith, Sam Smith, yes. uh -huh. <laughs> Sam Smith like sang and the entire show was like, you know, they were depicting hell right there on stage. For Taylor Swift, you're sitting down, you're watching a Taylor Swift wearing a bikini and then she does good things at the side. And then here we're sitting and watching the Grammys and maybe maybe Sam Smith is a good person, but here he's depicting something else. Whoa. Right? Mm -hmm. I think there, there also you need to ask yourself if the person is doing good in life, really you can admire their good deeds. But when they're putting content that's really questionable to your lifestyle, your moral values, I personally feel that should be kept aside and not really... Uh, made a part of your life like you shouldn't really be consuming that on and on but as okay so when you're at uh, an age of whatever 12 plus or even younger you know when you're a child then how do you um, or maybe say high school and you know a teenager and that's the that's the dominant culture then how do you how do you pick up what is what is okay because that's, that's when parents have to really like also pay attention to what their kids are watching but how do you do that you can't monitor your uh, child's phone i think it's also important to instill maybe responsibility or an understanding of okay you can consume this and this is what is happening out there but maybe this is not meant for you like but a child who's really small wouldn't understand that difference. a child who's really small but they can have open conversations fair. with their parents and their parents can have open conversations with them right now the taboo is that no means no don't watch it don't watch it right the child don't know why why is it no why is it not because a lot of us as young if i'm talking about myself a lot of times i as a child i didn't know a lot about the teachings of the church right so if there's a song about abortion and stuff like that i'll just be like huh, okay just a song i don't really care about it what is bad about it what's good about it i don't know so i think that's when parents have to come being responsible to make the child understand that you know these songs but, don't really okay so there's this there's this other thing which is okay so when we were young and we used to go on drives mm -hmm. uh, as a family sometimes yeah. to church we'd put on the radio right yeah, and the yeah, radio yeah. is playing songs yes, yes and yes, 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 i've yes. always loved music and you sing along in the yes, car yes, yes. so when i was really young i really liked the pussycat dolls but mm -hmm. they're a burlesque group which is uh, essentially there it's it's a quite a sexualized performance it's a type of uh, performance in oh, which okay, it's yes. quite it's, it's it's a sexualized it's a genre thing. yeah burlesque is a genre oh, but okay. these guys are mainstream so they're like out of a few of them, some of them are only dancers, some of them are only singers. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of my favorite songs when I was uh, whatever, 10, 12 or however old was Loosen Up My Buttons, which I had not thought had so much meaning. Yes, but yes, I used yes. to sing that in the car with yes, my parents yes, yes, who yes. also didn't think much of it. So, yes. so my question again is maybe in the innocence of like as children, can that be disregarded? But now when I look back, I'm like, oh my goodness, I sang that. It was a fun song, but you know. How did you come to realize that is a good or a bad song? The I when which when part I, of your age? I think when I was in my twenties, I was like, "Ha, huh, okay." Mm. So I was singing about uh, because I I heard that song again after quite a while, right? Okay. It had gone out of trend. Then okay. when I heard it after a really long time, I was like, mm -hmm. "Hey, I remember that song." That was, and then I was like, "I sang that as like a 10, 12 year old." Okay. And so, music has been an important part of faith from the get-go right like we when we are entering church we mm -hmm. start with a song we start with the entrance hymn mm -hmm. so music has been integral in our faith mm -hmm. and uh, saint augustine said if you're singing you're praying twice yeah. uh, which is a very beautiful thing so maybe you could shed some light on how uh, music helps us in our faith or how it helps us grow in our faith mm -hmm. if you could shed some light on that father um, yeah, the church has a beautiful tradition of music you know? yeah. um, because the church has also evolved through centuries. At the beginning, there was this Gregorian chants, there was basic chants. Yeah. Um, then, you know, the monks were the first one to write music notations. Right. Uh, they were the ones who, you know, created this kind of harmony. Mm -hmm. Harmony was a big topic, yeah. um, you know. That and all evolved only when somebody has faith yeah. and that love to that God and they want to kind of give the best thing what they have, you know. Mm. You give your best gift what you have to somebody whom you love. It's Music is one thing like that, 
uh, what the monks those days did and um, it evolved chants middle ages renaissance then slowly you know instruments developed you know yeah. Um, I think the church had quite the uh, active role in that as well because at that time only the educated had access to music and instruments were expensive yeah, exactly. instruments were expensive royalty and the church had yeah. access especially in parts of Europe and all you yeah. you see that you know you have Mozart uh, mass he has written that mass it's a particular mass so entrance him everything is sung mm. it's about one and a half hours it's it is pompous it is with an orchestra of 100 people oh, playing oh wow it is a culture by itself but if you talk about the culture what we have in india how it developed um they basically you know it was all latin those days yeah. so even my father was an altar boy he knows latin hymns and they sang right. as uh, yeah. as altar boys uh, they heard it and they learned it but then after the second vatican council what i think also is a beautiful thing where they said okay we need to integrate the culture and the language and we had uh, songs in our own language where we could understand right in those days latin we couldn't understand and that made a lot of sense latin music was also beautiful you know mm -hmm. it, it 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 is very most of the latin music was kind of chants mm -hmm. and when there is chants in a room we have that also in hinduistic tradition yeah we have that also in islam you know yeah. it's a kind of the same concept you have a chant where your 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 body is relaxed mm. you come to a state where you really pray mm. uh, it's meditative meditative right. yeah that's right. the idea of the whole thing yeah. of prayer actually yes. that's the beauty of rosary actually yeah. you from all your daily life what is happening in your day to day life your timetable your stress and all that when you say a rosary or you sit to prayer you have, at least your body has to re yes. recuperate na yeah. so that's how we have also as human beings beautifully combined music mm. with our liturgy um, what do you think michel um, is dance also a beautiful form to relax oneself uh, we, uh, we and get close to god oh yeah for me personally it is uh, dance is a form of worship it's always about like how could you ex how could you basically pray to god using your body mm -hmm. and uh, i have always loved dancing uh, as a form of prayer like we have a lot of times where we are singing and you know praise and worship mm -hmm. but then i've always wondered what if like we could make musicals and bible stories where people are dancing having a proper choreography mm. but everything centered around god and and what his love is for us That's so, beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think you should totally do that. Yeah. yeah. You probably be the that first. That would be like a dream. Yeah. To like have how yeah. a Broadway would be there but then like you know on a biblical sense. Oh, that's beautiful. That would be yes. really nice. And that's a great way to also Evangelize. like it's a teaching tool. Yes. yes. Because yes. people You can do a Broadway musical about the life of St. Francis of Assisi. Yes, oh. yes, yes. Paul <laughs> can be part of it. <laughs> you can come and do a rap for us. No, yeah. we are, we are planning a a rap a musical version of the life of St. Francis of Assisi. Wow. Oh, that's really in nice. In German, but yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, there are also many questions in the minds of especially youth. especially because you know uh, they listen to different kinds of music they feel a little bit bored when they come to mm -hmm. the church and uh, one important part <laughs> which is very much neglected in the church is the sound system oh <laughs> yeah it is it is for anybody who sings in the choir also for music you need yes. a good sound right yeah. good sound. um building is important but yeah. i think we need as the church also to you know little bit invest there yes, yes. because um, it really elevates or yeah. uh, your uh, worship experience yeah. i would agree yeah i think yeah. it that would be very nice aspect if parish priests take in that into an important part of the liturgy right. and the sound because those days uh, there were there were massive like churches, massive churches yeah. massive churches and they acoustics. had the preaching acoustics yeah, yeah yes. preaching on the can't say but they stand on top and they preach yeah. loudly yes. and now you have a huge crowd yeah. when you sing sometimes music is loud yeah. yeah and also it is also nice that when musicians and people get educated yeah. especially in the church um because i think they should invest also there yeah. when we have uh, christian musicians when we have christian dancers i think the church is also you know it Needs pushes to encourage, it yeah. improves together yeah. we are a family 
but we need these tools like what yeah. you are doing in this media center is absolutely wonderful actually you know through this we are reaching out to people you know and so many people other than who probably may come to church yeah for these things are little bit neglected but it is picking up yeah i think we need to give a little more i think more. also with time there is more exposures and then they people will also understand that they need it uh, often times it gets neglected because you just don't know any better you're just like okay it's there and so yeah yeah um i i if for example i don't know much about Kar- carnatic music so even if you're going off or anything i wouldn't be able to say so mm-hmm. i think it's it's just if you're not in the music circuit and you don't yes. really know that yes. that is so i think awareness is great yeah yes. awareness <coughs> a little bit of uh, you know you f- refine your art you learn yeah. you study yeah that would really contribute to the church you know yeah. that's why they send priests for higher education so that they kind of also yeah. um, you know the sermons would be better their yeah. they, you know the books that they write would be better yeah. like that even the i don't like the word laity you are also human beings i'm also human beings <laughs> we are not separated okay it's just a kind of uh, different words but i think every person in the church has to contribute as a youth you cannot just say ah, the choir was so bad you should ask yourself uh, have i made an effort also to go and join in the choir thank you that's yeah. a very good point yes. to take away yeah. for anyone who feels like okay mass was not great today let's talk about let's complain about it what can we do exactly yeah yeah, yeah i think that is very important for uh, us as christians as as a family church yeah. family yeah. and uh, it not only increases our faith yeah. and we feel good okay we went and did something yeah. Yeah. or maybe a liturgical dance would be also be great yeah, yeah. yeah. when the entrance song with the dance i would love that mm-hmm. you know yeah. it as a form of worship yes. you know yeah. you have your talent and you're giving the best talent to them yes. to god i mean yes. Yes. and i think that would enhance the liturgy and our worship um it would bond also it yes. makes it also lively you know mm, yeah. The, yeah which which will totally uh, desecrate the idea that um uh, church is boring because it's not it's a beautiful yeah. it's a beautiful session where we worship god actually sure. i should mention this uh, example concrete examples in european context those days 17th century when mozart was there he was kind of a revolutionary actually yeah. you know was great, there yeah. was only gregorian chant and suddenly he comes with the 100 piece orchestra and he writes a beautiful mass uh, you know you, it's difficult he was condemned he was like you know he was not very much liked yeah. by the people in the church mm. but then he worked it out and now we praise him like anything mm-hmm. now we have landed to a situation where we have kind of adapted up to the second vatican council many hymns and all that but also to speak the language of the youth to use that language maybe not you know extreme but we need to make efforts uh, to get the youth because the youth are the pillars of the church you know if yeah. they don't come to church and they feel boring i don't know how it will carry on mm. and i think a great takeaway from this is also a uh, personal responsibility as christians yeah. is yeah is, and see when i speak like this you know it it when you are not in the context when you are a little bit elderly or young in not in the context of this younger generation you will feel it's not a good idea yeah. but we need to know the minds of this young people yeah what do you like or what is happening they why they are running behind such things mm. you need to study this yeah. um, and i think that's very important part i think yeah i think that's fair yeah i think the church today but the, even i've seen how youth of the parish have also been put in a lot they put in a lot of effort to make things uh you know depict them in a really good sense like for example i attended a youth mass and they were depicting the stations of the cross mm-hmm. and very beautifully done it was an entire musical Mm-hmm. of stations of the cross there was acting and all of these yeah. things and then yeah. i i can see that the youth are actually eager to take part in church yeah. it's just that you know exactly. we need to give them more opportunities to take leadership and responsibilities and yeah. i'm sure they'll come out with really brilliant ideas mm-hmm. yeah i think that's a great takeaway and i think yeah. that's a great uh, overall takeaway for even the message today is yeah. like responsibility and and you know let's give give our youth the opportunity yes. to really show what they can do with yes. music with dance with art yes. and yes. i think that's beautiful and all to praise the lord yeah. that's great yeah exactly one question that i had is uh, one of the uh, popular dance forms that i've mm-hmm. seen now online 
a uh, little controversial one is like the twerking mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. which uh, when i kind of read up a little bit about it 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 comes from an african subculture right yeah, yeah. uh but it is it is made mainstream now yes, uh yes. and it's it's uh, its context of course varies but yes, yes, uh, yes. as as a catholic or a christian would you and as a dancer most importantly yeah, yeah, how yeah. do you view this dance form and are there dance forms like this that you feel like you're going to draw a line here and this is okay and this is not okay does this align with your values like how do you uh, how do you look at it I think it's important to understand that twerking itself is not a dance form. It's a it's it's just a step that's a part of a dance form. Okay. And uh, I know a lot of people perform it at different places, mm. but again, it really comes down to people just having fun. Mm-hmm. But if I, as a choreographer personally, would have to like conduct a show, I wouldn't really add it into it because I am very conscious about the audience watching. Yeah. I have grown up teaching kids from 3 to people till 60. So I have a broader perspective of understanding that an audience cannot really understand anything you put up on stage. I like to be aware of like okay there are people watching. They have their mindsets when you're watching something. But if you're just like casually, you know, having fun with your friends at home and you may have african friends as well and they'll be teaching you their dance style i think that's okay as long as you understand you're not really uh you know doing it f- for with a bad intention okay. a lot of people today do it for fun mm-hmm. they do it for fun but and then again it's turned into vulgarity when it's done on stage because of the clothes you're wearing yeah uh so i think you need to be prudent there okay as to where you are performing yeah. and uh, who are the people watching you yeah. it's it's good i personally feel it's good to be responsible as a content creator as someone in creating content and as, as a viewer yeah to understand that responsibility to draw that line and be like okay this is not this is not the setting i should be doing it but you know chilling with friends and you're dancing at home and there's no harm there right. everyone's just having fun yeah um I also I also want to share how you know that you need to be conscious about uh, the the a lot of us don't have a lot of knowledge about steps and the history of where a particular dance form comes right, right but it shouldn't be taken out of context and use it somewhere else right like even with twerking it's come from an african dance form and there's a reason why they do it and they don't see it as something different the message is pretty clear it's part of their culture it's a part yeah. of their culture yeah. but if we are going to take it out of context and just you know sometimes we need to be careful about you know we t- what are we taking out of context and, and just appropriating u- uh, yes. in cultures yeah and just using it for the fun of it or even like provoking vulgarity mm-hmm. it's so important right and like for example even belly dancing if you go back to the history it actually started off with the whole thing about celebrating femininity right right it's it's all about the waist but then again today when we see it's totally taken out of context the men are made you know the the main part about it and then women are just dancing around honestly it's just taken so out of context right. i think that's where we need to be careful about what we are doing and where is it coming from we need to be mm. uh, conscious about that okay right i think that's a good point Okay. I'm far away <laughs> from this. I don't dance. I do dance a little bit of steps for my music videos. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I would. I would love to watch that. Yeah. Yeah. Please. I think I would. I would do the same thing. Please, yeah, please, please, please. Uh, yes. Music videos. I would yes. be like, wow, father. Father doesn't just rap, but he yeah. also dances. Yeah. And father bit. sings beautifully. I just saw his uh, one of his music videos in German. Thank you. In German, yes. which I think is fantastic that you've picked up a different language and then you're spreading the gospel in yeah. that language. Yeah. Um. Some of the things what I said also is also has a background from where I'm coming. Yeah. I, like yeah. I'm in the yes. European context yes. also. Yeah. I need to adapt there. and mm. that's why i went into rap because i'm not a rapper not a born rapper no but i had to learn rap yeah. to adapt to the language of the youth mm. yeah i have a youtube channel actually two youtube channels uh, one is uh, my name sandesh manuel mm. i have mostly german content yeah. and one more is franciscan vibes we have just english english songs Schaukstehe, du warst schon da Wenn ich auch fliehe, du bist mir nah Vergiss es nie 
I'm trying to reach out to people who do not come to church, who do not know yeah. um, about Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think this was a lovely conversation. Thank you both so much for joining. And before we conclude, Father Sandesh, if you could just lead us in a prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us, Lord. Every day is a new day. Every day is a new blessing that you share upon us. Thank you for this beautiful time where we discussed about art and our faith. I think you are the greatest artist of all times. Bless us and give us the grace to change our lives and make our lives a little more better than what we are today. And if music helps, we will be very grateful. We make this prayer in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much also. Thank you so much. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Michelle and Father Sandesh. And thank you all for joining in. If you like this episode, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And also comment and let us know if you want to watch anything else. And thank you all for joining us uh, for another episode at the Heart Rock Cafe where we have heartfelt conversations based on the solid rock of faith over a cup of hot coffee. <laughs>